Hello everyone and welcome to my General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Felicia and Holly went to the Port Charles Grill for dinner. Holly was browsing through a magazine when she came across a deception advertisement. Felicia explained that the man in the advertisement was Max Lawlost's son, Cody. Holly was impressed. Felicia offered to have Holly over for supper so she could meet Cody. Felicia updated Holly on the Cody saga, including how Cody saved James' life, cementing Mac and Cody's father-son relationship. Holly appeared astonished to learn that Sasha Corbin was Cody's girlfriend, and she returned her gaze to the deception advertisement. Holly appeared concerned by all Felicia told her about Sasha. She was curious that this woman had given up modeling to work as the quartermain cook and was dating a man who was good with horses and children. Holly saw that Felicia had portrayed Cody as a con man, and she wondered how Felicia could be certain that Cody was not conducting a con right now. Felicia stated she wasn't sure at first, but she had grown to trust Cody and was certain he was a Scorpio. Diane informed Robert that she needed to leave for a meeting with a judge. Max stopped in before Diane departed and asked to speak with Robert alone. Before leaving, Diane expressed her excitement for dinner and dessert. Robert informed Mac that he didn't have to worry about Holly, pointing to the gorgeous redhead who had just departed. Love General Hospital, BNB, &B, Days, or other soap operas? Join the debate on our SC forums. Click here to interact with fans and participate in debates immediately. She is the only woman I really want to be with, Robert stated. Mac was relieved to hear that, but he feared Robert would be pulled to Holly. Mac pointed out that Holly was still a con artist who concealed secrets. When you've been in business for as long as the two of us have, you can tell when someone is lying. You can feel it, Mac explained. Diane returned after Mac had left and asked what he wanted. Robert informed her that Mac was certain he was still hooked up on Holly. Diane inquired if Mac was correct, but Robert responded no. Holly is my past. You are my future and present, Robert murmured as he leaned in for a kiss. In the Quartermain living room, Sasha overheard Michael on the phone discussing his support for the new Tomorrow Institute. When he hung up, she mentioned how generous he was. Sasha immediately launched into her presentation for Cody. She informed Michael that Cody intended to buy Serenity and transform it into an animal refuge. Sasha was dismayed when Michael said he couldn't assist. Sasha was mortified that she had even asked. Michael explained that he would have given her the money, but he did not believe he knew Cody well enough to invest that much money. Tracy entered the room after Michael had departed, shocked that Sasha had requested for money from him. Sasha informed Tracy that the money was for Cody to purchase Serenity and pursue his aspirations. Sasha admitted that Cody had no idea she had urged Michael to invest. I knew that me asking Michael was better than the alternative, she stated. Tracy inquired about the alternatives. Cody is asking you for money, Sasha revealed. Sasha told Tracy that Cody didn't want her to think he was simply another man looking for her money. Tracy was not amused by Sasha's intentions and reminded her of her proper role. Asking my nephew for money was extremely inappropriate. You are not a visitor here, you are an employee, Tracy said, if something like this happens again, you will look for work elsewhere. When Sasha was alone, the doorbell rang. Sasha opened it and discovered Holly. What are you doing here, mother? A surprised Sasha inquired. Jason arrived at Anna's workplace, but neither of them understood why he was there. Brennan strolled in unexpectedly and announced that he had summoned Jason. He had news for Anna and Jason. Sidwell was not among the dead bodies discovered by the WSB at his compound. Brennan warned Anna and Jason about the hazards of Sidwell being alive and hiding, waiting to pounce. Jason didn't appear to see the huge concern until Brennan informed him that the pilot Brennan had hired to get them out of Africa had been killed. Anna was frightened by the news and tried to argue that it might not have been related to Sidwell. Brennan had an additional question for Jason and Anna. Did either of you bring home a souvenir from your travels? Brennan asked. We barely got out of Sidwell's compound alive. 
We certainly didn't have time to grab a couple of knickknacks, if that's what you're talking about, Anna exclaimed incredulously. Brennan wondered if Holly had taken anything. Anna revealed that they had lost track of Holly before she arrived with a van to take them to the airport. Brennan was terrified that Sidwell would go through Anna and Jason to reach Holly. After all, he'd already followed Isaiah to Port Charles. I propose that you both keep your eyes open. If Sidwell survives, he has the means to track down everybody who stands in his way. At General Hospital, Elizabeth informed Dante that Lulu was stable thanks to Isaiah. She had crashed, but Isaiah had hurried quickly to help. Portia begged Dante for some privacy with the medical staff. Isaiah informed Portia that he had found an issue with Lulu's ventilator while checking on her. He had manually ventilated her, but Portia warned him that he was not on staff at GH, and the hospital could have been sued if something had gone wrong with Lulu. Jordan then stepped off the elevator, astonished to find that Isaiah might have saved Lulu's life. Isaiah was concerned that Lulu's ventilator had failed, but Portia wanted to know what had happened. Elizabeth was more concerned with how much longer Lulu could live. Jordan and Isaiah had a private discussion about the ventilator and Isaiah's circumstances. He had been released from the hospital and wanted to take Jordan to supper. Jordan readily agreed. During supper, Jordan told Isaiah that Lulu would have died without him. Isaiah told Jordan a little more about his career, revealing that he was once a transplant surgeon and had worked with patients like Lulu. Jordan was amazed by Isaiah's enthusiasm for saving lives. Sam was astonished to learn she was a match for Lulu. Are you telling me that it has always been me? I am the one who can save Lulu? Sam asked. Terry stated that Sam was a definite match, but she required additional testing to determine whether she could donate. Terry stated that she was not pressuring Sam and that Sam had to decide whether she wanted to take a risk and save Lulu. As Sam took in the facts, she anxiously asked Terry to administer the secondary tests. However, Sam made a request. We can't tell Dante, Sam explained, startling Terry. Terry told Sam that HIPAA laws prohibited her from disclosing any information about Sam's exams or donor prospects. Sam informed Terry that she did not want Dante and Rocco to know she was a match until she was certain that her liver was suitable for donation. While Sam underwent additional tests, a frantic Dante approached Elizabeth at the nurse's station, seeking more information on what had happened to Lulu. Elizabeth told Dante that everyone was interested in helping Lulu. Dante and Elizabeth went on to say that life with Lucky and Lulu had never been dull. But we've both moved on. We found happiness with other people, Elizabeth said. Just then, Elizabeth received a text from Terry informing her that Sam's test results were in. Tracy approached Cody at the Quartermain stables and informed him that she had just discovered Sasha harassing Michael for money. Tracy explained that Sasha claimed the money was for Cody and wanted to know whether he was in trouble. I didn't think so until you showed up, Cody explained. Cody clarified that he had not asked Sasha to collect money from Michael on his behalf. He stated that Serenity was for sale and that he had once planned to buy and restore it. Cody admitted that he had pondered asking Tracy. But I get the feeling that a lot of people in your life draw from the bank of Tracy, and I didn't want to be one of them, continued Cody. Tracy said that several of the guys in her life had treated her in this manner. Tracy spoke with Cody about Luke and how their relationship blossomed into love. Cody saw the parallels to his introduction to Port Charles, but felt he had improved his image since then. Tracy admits to liking Cody a lot. Tracy asked again if Cody had any questions for her. Cody stated that if he bought Serenity, it would be because he did not borrow from a friend. A very good and important friend, Cody explained. Love General Hospital, B&B, &B, Days, or other soap operas? Join the debate on our SC forums. Click here to interact with fans and participate in debates immediately. Alexis went to Jordan's workplace to discuss Molly and TJ's relationship. Alexis could see the marriage was struggling. Jordan agreed that the chances of a relationship surviving following the death of a child were low. Alexis said she knew Molly and TJ loved each other, but the strain was too much. Alexis was concerned that Ava's trial would drive them over the brink, especially since Rick took the case. 
Alexis stated that if Rick was successful in removing Ava, Molly and TJ would face much greater difficulties. Jordan recognized that Molly and TJ were in jeopardy, but he insisted that if their relationship was to survive, they had to do it on their own. Alexis tried to get information on Ava's case, but Jordan indicated it was in Robert's hands. When Sasha asked what Holly was doing in the Q mansion, Holly explained that she was simply there for Sasha's well-being, not to pull out a hoax. Sasha questioned Holly, claiming she was the reason her life was a mess. Holly allowed herself in and inquired about Sasha's job for the quartermains. Sasha claimed she was a legitimate cook. Holly revealed that she had left Sasha because Ethan had gotten in trouble. Sasha stated that she would still be serving tables if she had not been offered a more lucrative position. Holly recognized that Sasha was alluding to her time posing as Nina Reeves' daughter. Holly apologized for not being present for Sasha, saying she had not been the mother she deserved. You're not the mother that anyone deserves, Sasha exclaimed. Holly admitted she had frequently let Sasha down but could not reverse her mistakes. Holly claimed she could prevent Sasha from making a catastrophic mistake. Holly urged Sasha not to get too involved with Cody Bell. Sasha stated that she had become close to Cody and fell for him. Holly informed Sasha that she needed to break up with Cody. He's your cousin, Holly explained. Sasha didn't believe her mother, but Holly said that she had never told Sasha about her father and recognized it was a big mistake. When I was pregnant, I thought your father was dead, Holly explained. She said she was trying to protect Sasha. A lot of people would have used it against you. Scorpios have enemies. Mac does, or did. And so does your father, Robert, Holly explained. Sasha claimed her mother was usually lying, but Holly insisted the information was correct. Sasha didn't believe she needed protection because Robert had another daughter who didn't need to be separated from him. Holly claimed she was terrified of coming up at Robert's door with a 12-year-old kid, pointing out that he had already been injured in that way when Anna kept Robin away from him. Sasha mentioned that Robert and Anna got along quite well. Holly claimed that Robert was the love of her life, and she had betrayed him. Holly remarked that Felicia had told her what a great man Cody was, and she did not want to harm Sasha. Holly insisted Cody was Sasha's cousin. Sasha was upset and told her mother to stay out of her life and away from Cody. As Sasha pushed her way out the door, Tracy noticed Holly and exclaimed, look what the cat dragged in. Holly stated to Tracy that she had returned with Lucky and stopped by Tracy's to say hello. Tracy questioned why her cook was unhappy with Holly. Did you not like her scones? Tracy scoffed. Holly inquired about Cody's employment there, but Tracy abruptly stated that it was none of Holly's concern. Tracy claimed that Cody worked there and was a friend. Holly remarked that Mac must be overjoyed. He is relieved that his son does not require constant attention. How is Ethan doing, by the way? Tracy asked. According to Holly, Ethan was disappointed to learn that he was not a good match for Lulu. Instead of going to see him as usual, you came here. Why is that? Tracy mused. She instructed Holly to see herself out. Ava and Rick met for dinner at the PC Grill. Rick was convinced that Ava would soon be free of responsibility for Christina's fall. He stated that he had developed a strategy that was ready for implementation. Rick stated that Heather's case would be decided tomorrow and that it was proceeding nicely. Rick stated that Ava had facts on her side, but they should gather more. When they looked up, they noticed Christina had come in. Christina walked over to Rick and Ava's table and advised Ava to enjoy one of her final evenings in town. Rick met Christina and expressed his confidence that she was well. I could do better. Christina added, I could be home with my daughter. You mean Molly's daughter? Rick inquired, then described the surrogacy agreement. Your knowledge is so impressive, especially coming from an absentee father, Christina exclaimed. Christina told Rick that she didn't know how Molly could look at him while he represented the person responsible for Adela's death. Molly understands what I know. Ava was not to blame for what happened to Irene, it was an accident. It was yours, Rick stated, emphasizing the baby's name. Christina angrily claimed that Ava had attacked her, but Rick responded that Ava had not sought Christina. 
You went to her, Rick explained. Christina began yelling that the cops had proof. Ava softly informed Christina that she was making a scene. Good. I hope everyone knows you killed my daughter, just as you did Connie and Morgan. Christina shouted. Christina stated that she would make sure Ava spent her life in prison. Rick claimed Ava was not going anywhere and sipped his beer. Christina knocked the glass out of his hand, sending it flying across the room. You will pay for what you've done. Christina exclaimed as Alexis walked in. Rick's mouth was bleeding as Alexis walked up. Rick indicated he would not file charges against Christina and complimented Alexis on the Kate's decision. Lucky break that the gun showed up when it did. You must have friends in high places, Rick remarked. Ava viewed Christina's behavior as another temper tantrum. She mentioned that it couldn't be easy for Rick because the baby was his grandchild. Rick claimed it was an accident, but if blame had to be assigned, it should go to Christina. Rick mentioned that everyone at the restaurant might testify on the stand that Christina was the one who got out of control. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.